This is Miles Davis on Columbia from 1966 to 1975. This is um, probably the most interesting period for me because it goes from acoustic jazz to all out fully electric chaos. Um, yeah, my favorite period for Miles. Kicking off is Miles Miles. This is from 1966. Um, ah, this is a great album. Some nice material here. Um, Orbit, Circle, Footprints, Dolores, Freedom, Jazz, Dance, Gingerbread Boy. Um, the whole band contribute to songs on this. Yeah. Tracks. Brilliant. Uh, excellent album. Um, certainly one of my favourite. Sorcerer, um, again another good one, um, maybe a little bit um, of a back step compared to Miles Spiles, but um, some good stuff here as well, Prince of Darkness, Mascalero, um, yeah I really like this, um, interesting music to listen to, he had a fantastic band at the time of course. Nefertiti. Um, it's another classic. And uh, this was released in 1968. I like Nefertiti itself. That's a great track. Uh, Fall is lovely. Um, Riot is good. Uh, a few bonus tracks again. These are all Columbia remasters from the late 90s. Um, Miles in the Sky. This is where it starts to change uh, because, um, and I like this album, um, it just, it's kind of addictive, the um, opening track stuff. It's kind of a funky bossa nova. Um, it's a long track as well. When I first heard it back in, God, 1999, I loved it instantly. Paraphernalia, uh, paraphernalia is good. Black comedy, country sun. Um, uh, there's a, a Rhodes organ on this, on stuff, um, George Benson plays guitar on one track as well. So, uh, certainly, uh, or he, he, there's a change in the air on this one, so this is a transitional album. Um, uh, then again, I guess you could say the same about, uh, Fali de Kilimanjaro, uh, because there's also, um, electric instruments on this. Um. Rhodes, I think. Um, I really like this one as well. Frillan Brun. Um, Toot the Sweet. That's an incredible drum track with uh, from Tony Williams. Um, Petty Machine, Little Stuff. Phil's the Kilimanjaro. Mademoiselle Mabry. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good one. Um, this was um, released in 1969. Yeah, I really like this one. It's a cracker. Water Babies, uh, again, probably from the, it is from the uh, same era, but it wasn't released until, I think, um, 1976. Um, it's got Water Babies on the Capricorn, Sweet Pea, Two-Faced, Jewel, Mr. Anthony Tillman Williams Process. Splash. Um, this was from the Philly de Kilimanjaro sessions and then going into the Silent Way sessions. Um, some interesting stuff on here. Uh, like I said, it's kind of a compilation that was released after Miles stopped recording in 1975. And, and now there's a total change. Uh, in the Silent Way, this is um, no longer jazz moody electric music with a lot of repeats and ostinatos and uh, loops Tio Macero editing away like a madman uh, you've got Shish Peaceful um, in a silent way uh, the band has changed here dramatically um, Wayne Shorter is still on the sax but he's playing soprano Shik Korea, Herbie Hancock are playing electric pianos 
uh, Joe Zawinul is playing the organ. Um, went on to perform um, Weather Report. John McLaughlin, electric guitar. Dave Holland, bass. Tony Williams, drums. Uh, this is classed as um, an avant garde masterpiece from the time. It's certainly very, very different to anything he's ever done. The, the trumpet still remains the same, though, you know, it's still Miles, you know. Um, you take away the music, and Miles could be, you know, it's a classic sound. Next up is another big one. Uh, this is um, Bitches Brew. This is probably one of the most controversial and one of the most famous um, crossover jazz rock funk fusion albums of all time. This actually created a whole genre and created a whole flow of new bands. Weather Report certainly came out of this. Um, yeah, it's heavy going the first time you ever hear it. There's a lot of guest musicians on this. Um, Wayne Shorter, Benny Maupin, Joe Zawano, Larry Young, Chick Corea, John McLaughlin, Dave Holland, Harvey Brooks, Lenny White, Jacques Dijanet. Um, great drummer who played with Keith Jarrett for an awful long time. And um, Don Elias on the drums and congas. Uh, Yuma Santos, <laughs> Shaker Congas. This is a groundbreaker. And um, everybody needs to hear this album. It's double, it's sprawling and big. And uh, there's not much to say about it except that you have to hear it. And it's it really. Um, live at the Fillmore East, March 1970. It's about that time. Uh, this is released in 2001. But um, it's a concert from 1970. Um, the electric band is quite aggressive and harsh on this. Um, we're down to a core of um, Wayne Shorter, Chick Corea, Dave Holland, Jack DeJeanette, Erto Moreira. Direction, Spanish Key. Directions, Miles runs the voodoo down, um, Bitches Brew, it's about that time, Willie Nelson. We're kind of touching into Jack Johnson now here as well. Um, stuff is very harsh, and very diffuse, stuff like that. Um, not for everybody. And here we have one of my favourite Miles Davis albums of all time. I just never get sick of this. Um, a tribute to Jack Johnson. Um, this was... At least in 1970, um, it, it was a soundtrack um, for a documentary about um, Jack Johnson, the famous boxer from um, the turn of the last century. He was um, a bit like Miles in a way. He was um, very powerful, very influential black man. Um, liked cars, liked white women. Very similar to Miles. There's only two pieces on this right off in Yes or Now. Um, it's fantastic. I absolutely love it. I could never ever get sick of this. Um, I even bought the um, complete. Um, Steve Grossman on soprano, sax, Herbie Hancock organ, John McLaughlin guitar, Michael Henderson electric bass, Billy Cobham drums, um, Theo Macero, um edited the sessions together and uh, came up with a beauty. Um, it's a good 50 minutes long, great for driving, I love it. Um, I love this picture as well. That, that was on the cover of some of the albums in different territories. Yeah. This is a fantastic album and you must hear it. <laughs> Next up is um, Black Beauty, Miles at the Fillmore West. This was released in 1977 in Japan, I think. Um, but um, you've got the, um, the classic early 70s fusion lineup. Um, again, this one you have um, got from Bitches Brew, and um, yeah, like I said, it's not for everybody, and um, it can be heavy going if you're not into that kind of stuff. <laughs> this is Miles at the Fillmore. This is Fillmore West. Um, another. Rock Fusion Blaster. Um, yeah. Keith Jarrett appears on this um, playing organ. This is far out stuff. <laughs> live Evil. This is a studio album. Um, it contains some live tracks from Cellar Door and some of the Jack Johnson um, 
sessions. There's some good stuff on this. Um, yeah. On the corner, 1972. This is a masterpiece. Uh, I just love it. It's jangly, funky. It it, it precedes hip hop and breakbeat. Um, ah, oh, what an album. Um, this is where kind of people were kind of, you know, saying what is he doing and stuff. Um, I love this period. The music is just—it's like nothing else. It's just completely, you know, drum. Tracks are relentless, um, hammering away. Uh, love it. Well, it's Davidson concert um, recorded at Philharmonic Hall, New York. Another um, live album. And um, it's got some stuff here from um, on the corner. Jack Johnson, Ife, right off the team. So there's some good stuff here. Um, the band again is starting to change at this stage. Lots of percussion. Big fun. This was released in 1974. Um, contains um, stuff from Bitches Brew Sessions and On the Corner Sessions. Um, studio, lots of edits and stuff like that by Tio Masira to bring out a double album of greatness. Um, some good stuff on this. Some of the tracks are very long 27, 28 minutes. Uh, yeah, get up with it. Uh, this is another one. Um, Big double. Seventy four. Um, he loved him madly. Is a very very quiet and somber piece to Duke Ellington because he died in that time. Uh, Mesha honky tonk rated X. Again, it um, tips into the um, on the corner sessions. Um, yeah, Billy Preston, Red China Blues, Calypso. Lima. Yeah. Good album. Heavy going. Dark Magus. Uh, this is recorded um, live at um, Carnegie Hall, New York City. 1974. Um, this is pretty relentless. Um, you have um, Al Foster on drums on this one and uh, I think he's great like you know he injects a lot of life into the uh, music um, Dave Liebman on um, saxophone um, Peter Cozy guitar Reggie Lucas Dominic Gaumont Michael Henderson on bass um, this stuff is uh, you know not easy to listen to but um, very rewarding when you get into it. It's a lot in there. Next up is Agartha. This is a live concert from Japan in 1975. Uh, the final live performances by Miles until 1982. Um, this is pretty long. Um, prelude. Maisha, interlude, team from Jack Johnson. Um, this hasn't been released by Columbia yet, in, in Europe anyway, as a remastered package. I hope some sooner or later they will release it as a box set. Um, you know, it'd be nice um, because, um, you know, it just needs to be remastered. And... Uh, we need more sleeve notes and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and finally, Pangea. This is uh, the evening concert from Osaka, February 1st, 1975. Um, again, a sprawling beast. 
Um, this was released in Japan only at the time, I think. Zimbabwe. It's 41 minutes, and disc two has Gondawa. Gondwanda. <laughs> I can't even pronounce it. 46, 50. Um, yeah, it would be nice to see this released um, as a package, you know, four disc set. Maybe outtakes, maybe some video footage if there is any. Um, it would be nice, uh, you know, to update the catalogue a little bit. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, that's Miles Davis on Columbia um, from 1966 to 1975. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please feel free to subscribe and uh, take care.